Okay guys, so today I'm gonna to talk you through the Duotone Pro Fish and how to add a deck pad onto one of your new Duotone boards. Now this is how the, all of our surfboards come. They come without a front deck pad but with a tail pad on the back. But I would highly recommend getting one of our deck pads so that you don't have to use wax whilst on the water. We do several different types of deck pad, so, but this is the one I'm using today, and you can order those online on the website or go to any one of our Duotone stores to get these or order it preferably when you order your new surfboard setup. One of the main advantages of having a deck pad on the front of your board is that there's no wax. So it means you can put it in the back of your car or in your van, slide it over your seats after a session and not worry about it ruining the whole interior of the car. Another really good reason for having a deck pad is it really helps with your landings and the impacts on the deck to reduce pressure dings across the cork underlayer and just generally looks after your board a little better. Okay, so the Pro Fish is a really nice surfboard. This is new for 2020 for small to medium sized waves and just generally a really user friendly board whilst on the water. This is the 5.2 Pro Fish. It features a really defined central concave and almost channel setup along the bottom of the board that you'll see in a lot of our boards this season. Really high performance and lightweight construction. It's a really nice size board for the sort of entry level wave rider that's looking to get into strapless and typically has small to medium sized waves at their local spot. It's got a thruster setup, which means it's got three fins as standard in the back, but it retains a lot of grip through the water because of these deep central channels. And this deep central channel actually has a double concave down the line of it, giving it even more grip on the water and a really smooth release through the tail. The tail is a fish shape, which gives a lot of volume through the back of the board. And yeah, just a really nice uh, light construction board for entry, beginner to entry level riders. Make sure when you get your new board that you fill in the warranty and peel off the warranty stickers so that we've got room to stick on the deck pad. You need a tape measure and a pencil. This is what I'm going to use just to make sure that it is central on the deck. I'm just going to make sure that I take the center of the board, so we're talking 20, so 10, center of the board is there, using pencil so that it doesn't permanently mark the board, but then I've got a reference to know the exact center so that I can get the pad equal on both sides. The next step is to take the pad out of the box. Right, so first things first, you wanna get these pads laid out as you want them on the deck. Um, I've got my central marker there, so I know where the center of my board is. I like to have a pretty wide stance, just in case my foot slips off the nose when I'm doing strapless airs and things like that. So I'll take my pad up to about the bottom of the front black line on the graphic and then position the outer pads along the edge of the cork not too close to the rail so that it doesn't affect the water flow but along the edge of the ridge on the rail along the edge of the cork and that is a good marker so that you get it correctly and even. Then I'm going to line up these two front pads with the bottom of this black line so that is all my reference points that I need in order to get this thing on square. And then my central line is directly down the center of those two pads. I'm gonna peel off the bottom of the sticky pad. Now remember, this board is brand new, so it doesn't have any salt on it or anything that's gonna stop this sticking. But if you've used your board previously, you wanna make sure that you wipe the board down with rubbing alcohol before you stick this on. Once you've peeled off the bottom, you want to hold it flat, position it vertically over the board in the right place. If you look carefully, these pads are actually not symmetrical. So you want to make sure that you get the curved bit, the tiny curved corner at the top of the deck so that it makes a nice shape 
on your pad, or at least that's how I'm gonna do it. And then you want to just position that top bit of the pad slightly higher so that it makes a nice line with the edge of the first pad that you put on, making sure that the gap between each pad is even. You can put these on lightly before you press them down. So if you make any mistakes, you can actually correct them. Um, the next is the third pad. I'm going to just make sure that the central line that I've drawn on is in the center of that gap. Okay. Okay, so once you're happy with your stance position and that they're all laid out nicely on the board, have a look at it, make sure it looks good, and then press evenly across the board, across the pad, and make sure that they are all stuck on firmly before using it on the water. There are two extra pads in the packet, so you can fill up the excess space on the deck if you've got a larger board, but because this is such a small board, I'm just gonna leave it with that as my front pad. I think it looks good, saves me using wax, and I would recommend leaving it in the sun for a few hours after sticking it on just to make sure that the heat has stuck it down correctly, but then you're ready for a session.